Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for watching this video and for spending some minutes with me. Today I want to show you how you could have made over $600,000 by just investing $4,000 a while ago. Um, by the way, this is no financial advice by any means. This is how I try to do it. So feel free to use this uh, method at your own risk. Uh, there is a lot of literature out there regarding the stock market, what it is, what it does, how to play the game and how to try to beat the market. I'm not going to spend too much time on the, on, on the background or the basics of it, but I totally recommend that you grab this book. It's called Multiple Streams of Income, where it details part of the discussion that we will cover today and some other very relevant strategies. So I'm going to put a link in the description of this video so you can grab it later. So let's jump into the numbers. What you see on the screen, this is the evolution of the Standard & Poor's over the past 24 years. Uh, for every year, I'm reflecting here how much the market went up or down. So 10% down in 2000, 13% down in 2001, and 23% down in 2002, and so on and so forth, right? So if you had invested $1,000 in 1999, today, you would have $3,000, okay? Um, and so in order to beat the market, I'm gonna show you now a couple of strategies that I'm trying to follow. The first one, let's open this a bit more, is this one. So it's difficult to beat the market, we know that, but there are some fund managers out there who are very, very clever and who have been doing this for a very long time. Probably the, the most well-known uh, investor in the market is Warren Buffett, and he owns a company called Berkshire. And so as you can see in these numbers, if you had invested the same $1,000 instead of the stock market in his own company, today you would have $9,500. So you would have three times more the initial investment. Um, and by the way, there are, there are moments in the evolution of his stock price that uh, he's below the market, like the reds mean, you know, he's below the market. It was 24 here, but in his case, it's only 3%, but the market grew 0% and he declined 3%, right? And so his own company went up and down, but he's making very good investments across the board. And so the return on his portfolio is larger to just investing in the Standard & Poor's. So in terms of investing, uh, there is a strategy that says that you should keep your uh, the majority of your savings in, uh, in the market itself, in the Standard & Poor's, or in a fund like VTSIX or something similar that you can mimic the, the market itself to reflect the same up and downs that the market is having because it's very difficult to beat the market. But then there are other strategies that allow you to, go, to try to go above the market, right? And so this is one of them. By investing... Uh, maybe a portion of your portfolio into the Berkshire stock, then you would be able to get a return that is higher than the market itself. By the way, Berkshire Hathaway has a couple of stores. One of them is uh, represented by BRKA and the price for the stock is half a million dollars. So this is the most expensive uh, stock out there. And so at some point what they did is they created a second one which is this one, BRKB, that you know has a price of today of $348. So it allows for smaller investors to also invest in this company. And if you look at the chart for a particular day, so if we go, for example, in this one for day, right? You will see that the, both charts move in the same direction all the time. So there is a full correlation. Okay, so let's go back to the numbers. So in this initial strategy, what I'm doing is I'm investing uh, some money into the Berkshire B stock, and this gives me a higher return on my investment. Now, um, I was reading this strategy in the book I just mentioned, and the book was written in 2004. And so I thought that is missing the past 20 years of, of stock market return for companies that have that did the IPO after 2004. So the second thing I'm providing in the analysis is this table, right? 
So what you see here now is the evolution of the stock price for companies like Apple, Amazon, Google, Meta, Microsoft, Nvidia, and Tesla. Why these companies? Because if you if we go to the so if we stock the largest companies by market cap, the number one at the moment is Apple, then Microsoft. We also have Google, Amazon, Nvidia, Tesla, Meta, and Berkshire, right? That's the company I was discussing. But there are other companies out there that over the past 20 years have grown quite considerably. And so the strategy that we just discussed for Berkshire could also apply to those. So let's assume for a second that in 2000, that in 1999, we had invested $6,000, right? Actually, the $4,000 I was describing at the beginning is only investing in Apple, uh, Amazon, Microsoft, and NVIDIA. The, today, if you had invested that money, you would have over $600,000. And so that's uh, in the past 24 years. So on a yearly basis, you would get a 21% return. And again, just uh, look at the numbers. Some of the years, Amazon goes down 80%, 30%, 90%, 18%, 38%, et cetera, et cetera. And the, rest, and the same for the rest of the red numbers. But as you can see, some of these companies, there are some years where they double the value of the stock, right? So NVIDIA went up 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. And most recently, like in 2021 and 22, look at this. 122%, 125%, 200%, right? Or other companies like Amazon, 175%, 161%, 105%, and so on and so forth. So even with all these reds that you see here where those particular stocks uh, had a, a performance that was lower than that the stock market in general that particular year, you are much better at the end of those years and that's because these are new companies or all the companies that are uh, you know at the forefront of the technology advancements in the world and that's why probably the market has been investing or relying on these companies so much and so the other thing i wanted now to know is okay uh, yeah this is fine if you had invested in 1999 i remember back then you know thousand dollars was still thousand dollars for me it was quite a lot of money and so I made some investments in different ways that didn't work. But if I had invested the money here and I had kept that money until today, I would have now a good uh, amount of money uh, in return. So the rest of the exercise of this analysis, if we open this, I've been trying to, uh, to see how much you know, a potential portfolio would have made if instead of investing in 1999, we had invested in 2000. So look at this. If we had invested in year 2000 to those companies that were listed at the time, publicly listed, uh, today you would have $1.4 million, right? And instead of 2000, if we had invested those $6,000 in 2001, today we would have $1 million. And by the way, $1 million here, that represents a 26.5 return on a yearly basis. That's what I'm calculating here. So it doesn't matter the fact that the market went down for some of these companies, you know, in particular years, the growth in some others is so high that it's still generating this amount of money over the, those many years. And so, okay, let's, let's, you know, let's try to decrease the span, the, the time frame, right? So instead of 20 years, this yellow here represents the past 10 years. So if I had invested $9,000 in 2013, today I would have $181,000. That's a 35% on a yearly basis. And if we scroll a bit more farther down, and instead of 10 years, we go to five years, which is this one here, one, two, three, four, five, four, five those $9,000 today would represent $43,000. So I think there is a lesson to be learned here in the sense that one strategy to beat the market could be, okay, I'm going to put some money in Berkshire for the next few years, but I'm also going to put some money into the top companies by market cap out there and just leave it for five or six or seven or 10 years. 
because my bet is over the next 10 years, uh, these companies will grow again quite a lot. The thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check next year what are the largest companies by market cap. And if there is a new company that joins the list, then I'll make an investment in that company. That's the example of Tesla. If we go farther down to when Tesla was listed, so this was in here 2010, probably, or two, two, between 2009 and 2010. So investing $1,000 in 2000, at the end of 2009 would have represented today $164,000. So as you can see, it's by return, you know, the same thousand dollars generates so much more than investing in the others as of today, at least with these numbers, right? And here next year in 2010, thousand dollars in Nvidia, thousand dollars in Tesla, 120,000, 150,000 dollars. I know the past is not going to be a reflection always of the future, but in these calculations for the past 24 years, if I keep scrolling down, the numbers are pretty similar all across the board. And so what I'm planning to do is to invest in these companies going forward on a yearly basis. And if there is a new company that joins, I'll invest in that new company as well. So I'll keep tracking that. And hopefully we can make some other videos in 10 years and see if my investment has reflected uh, so much growth or not. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you find this interesting. If you have any uh, comments just uh, send them to me i'll be happy to answer them and if you like this video like uh, the video and subscribe to my channel thank you so much and talk to you soon